What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony as you do car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Hyundai Elantra, courtesy of Jack Giambalvo Hyundai, New York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because there are a couple small upgrades for 2023, and the Elantra is going to be competing with the Corolla and the Civic, of course. But unlike those two, this one gets America's best warranty, being five years, 60,000 miles bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. Not only that, you also get three years or 36,000 miles miles of complimentary maintenance as well so you don't have to pay for things for the first three years so that is quite convenient so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 elantra first one being the se starting at twenty thousand five hundred dollars which by the way is a modest 650 dollar bump from the 2022 model year which is pretty on point for the 2023 models that i've been testing it's right about average as far as price bumps go sel trim level that is the one we are in today starting at 21,750, limited for 26,350, and lastly the end line starting at 27,050. dollars but as you can imagine with all of those trim levels there are actually two different power plants available for the elantra first one is going to belong to the se sel and limited trim levels that one is powered by a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 147 horsepower at 6200 rpm 132 pound feet of torque coming in at 45 100 rpm power is sent to the front wheels through an ivt that stands for intelligent variable transmission so if you were comparing it to the civic or the corolla it's a CVT basically, continuously variable transmission, but zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 8.4 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 30 in the city, 40 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then there is one other engine configuration. That one is going to belong to the N-line trim level. So that one is a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder, 201 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 195 pound feet of torque coming in at 1500 RPM. Power sent to the front wheels through a seven speed dual clutch, zero to 60 time approximately 7.5 seconds with mpg numbers 28 in the city 36 on the highway but yet again taking regular unleaded fuel so that's pretty cool but anyways before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our elantra did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there is a drive mode button kind of located just to the left of the shifter they will include normal sport and smart adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put this acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 elantra here up to speed all right so i got us in sport driving mode already we're just gonna do a slight rolling start here, but go baby. He's <laughs> right. Keeps the RPMs high, I will tell you guys that, but yeah, you're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway, but not the quickest thing in the world, but it's pretty on par for the segment. I'll put it that way, right on par with the Corolla and the Civic. But uh, yeah, it holds the RPMs high when you really get on it. Maybe it's because of that sport driving mode, like I was saying, so that is pretty cool. And you can definitely tell it's a heavier steering feel, but we'll get more into that. In a little bit here, I'm gonna put it back to normal driving mode. And as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11 inch ventilated front discs for the SE and SEL trim levels because it actually is gonna differ. That actually gets bumped up to 12 inch ventilated front discs then if you were to go with the limited or the end line. So expect slightly better braking power with those two trim levels. In the back, 10 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in in an incredible 116 feet that is brilliant let me go ahead and test the brake whoa 100 percent on the firmer side of things and like i said that 60 is your stopping distance number honestly if you guys look up all the numbers and i can tell you in the past 700 plus cars that have german 116 feet that's brilliant usually with sedans you get mid 120s if anything lower 120s and what i always say in my reviews is anything in the one teens is brilliant anything less than that is sports car good basically so 116 feet is quite brilliant and i can tell you guys it is 100 percent on the firm side of things when it comes to that braking feel which is a good thing gives you a better feeling of being in control it instantly brings you to a stop so braking is definitely the elantra strong suit without a doubt that is 100 on point for that number so 
Anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, torsion beam rear axle if you go with the SE or SEL trim levels. Another one of those things is going to be slightly different depending upon the trim level that you go with. Because if you go with the Limited or the M-Line, you're going to get an independent multi-link rear suspension. So we do have the torsion beam rear axle. Either way, you still get front and rear stabilizer bars. I also want to mention that. As far as ride quality goes, it feels like it's segment i'll put it that way you you can feel a decent amount of the road but that is to be expected in really any compact car it feels exactly like the corolla or the civic i'll put it that way so it pretty much is as expected like i said as far as steering feel goes in the normal driving mode i still have it in it's definitely on the looser side of things i will say that but again it kind of feels like the corolla the Civic, I would say, out of the three I've been comparing in this video is definitely the heaviest steering feel. But like I said, if you put it in that sport driving mode here in the Elantra, that is a much heavier steering feel. So that is an available option if you prefer that kind of steering feel on the firmer side of things. So that is available for you. So I did want to mention that. As far as cabin noise goes, as we're going, uh, I don't know, 40 miles per hour right now, it's honestly not that bad. It's pretty much, again, on par for the segment. You get a little bit of road noise. Wind noise is pretty much at bay, so I do like that, but you do get a little bit of road noise at higher speeds, I'll say that. At touch of visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Definitely 100% not gonna have any issues there, but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Hyundai Elantra. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Hyundai Elantra finished in fluid metal, in case you were curious of our exterior color name. But as always, let's go ahead and start where this thing is made. The uh, VIN number actually starts with the letter K, meaning the Elantra specifically is made in Korea. And I always like to point that out because even with this being a Korean brand, uh, many of its vehicles, at least here in the U.S., are made in the U.S., like the Sonata, for example, except for the Sonata Hybrid, which is made in Korea. So little fun fact, I guess. I'm getting off topic, but as always, let's go ahead and start up front on the Elantra here. Gloss black front grille is going to come standard on the SE and SEL trim levels. Dark chrome front grille is going to come standard on the Limited. You will also get though some inline badging found in that front grille if you were to go with the inline trim level, of course. Then take a look down to the corners there. You guys will find some uh, front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination, as you will often find on compact cars. Projector halogen headlights coming with the SE and SEL. That, of course, is what you guys are looking at right now. But if you were to go with either the limited or the N-line trims, you're going to get LED headlights up front. So a little added illumination there. But either way, you will get LED daytime running lights. You will also get the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. But also coming standard for all trim levels, and you don't always get this for the segment, automatic high beams. Meaning when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams. So that is definitely very nice there. And something I always like to mention with the Elantra is it has a much lower hood line than the competition. So it makes for much more aggressive looks. So definitely a very nice looking front end, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. But that about rounds out the front end of the Elantra. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of this one, black window surrounds will come standard. Chrome window surrounds, however, will come on the limited trim level only. So do want to mention that. As far as the, uh, the dividers for the windows, they are actually finished in matte black. I'll get up a little closer here to show you guys, but they are finished in matte black as opposed to gloss black as like the Sonata is finished in for some of their trim levels, I should say that. So I wanted to emphasize that. Another cool little design aspect, you guys can kind of see the Z kind of running through the side of the doors and there's there's no significance there and technically it's not a z but it looks like a z and it's a cool little design element that uh the uh, hyundai tucson also has on their side profile so big fan of that because it looks like nothing else on the road so i'm always a fan of different but body colored door handles of course coming standard body colored power adjustable side mirrors as well taking a look down at the wheel setup they will differ amongst the trim levels of course 15 inch alloys for the se 16 inch alloys for the sel although we do have some optional 17 inch alloys on our specific sel so there are some optional package options uh convenience package to be specific that will give you a bunch of stuff including upgraded wheels and lastly 18 inch alloys 
accent coming with the limited and the end line but that pretty much rounds out the side profile here let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so starting all the way to the top here you will find a body colored shark fin antenna just below that you kind of have this integrated rear spoiler i'm going to kind of see if i can get a different angle for you guys because although it's not a real rear spoiler it is kind of integrated kind of has this lip to it so i wanted to mention that because i think it looks dang good but of course you will get the elantra lettering spelled out horizontally as expected led tail lights are going to come on the limited and end line trim levels otherwise you're going to get your standard halogen bulbs back there and just below it all you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away down underneath the uh, passenger side in the back there but you will find chrome dual tips if you were to go with that end line trim level so wanted to mention that as well but as always i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so but now since we are around to the back of the Elantra, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob. There is a button kind of by the driver's side left foot down here from the driving position. And the coolest way though is there is a black button kind of right in the middle of the two taillights on the trunk itself. It's somewhat hidden, but that is yet another way to go ahead and open it up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there. There. there is uh, underneath of the cargo floor a spare tire in case you're wondering if there was that or the fix a flat there's a spare tire there's actually a decent amount of space around the spare tire as well so if you lived in Pennsylvania like I do and you wanted to put an ice scraper back there that is perfect place to put it basically but anyways then making our way up to the rear leg room that is going to come in at 38 inches even for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there there's also a rear center armrest with cup holders if you were to go with the limited trim level only and unfortunately no rear ventilation no rear charging ports either back there but then making our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the se and sel trims then there's going to be kind of a leather cloth combination seating for the limited and the end line Power driver's seat with power lumbar coming with the limited and the end line trim levels. Heated front seats though coming with the limited and end line. They're going to be optional on the SEL that we actually do have today. I'm actually going to turn those on right now because it's kind of cold here in PA. But overall, seating was plenty comfortable. I definitely appreciated our optional heated seats that we have on our SEL here because it is still pretty cold out so far today. It's 44 degrees. So honestly, seating was plenty comfortable, like I said. So no issues there. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped then if you were to go with the limited or end line optional on the SEL. So I'm a big fan of that. To make your way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Hyundai logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, a lot of buttons lock. Unlock the button to pop the rear trunk there. The uh, hold button with the circle that is going to be a remote start, which comes on the SEL trim level and up. Hence the reason why we have it today. There is a digital key coming with the limited, but ultimately it's all keyless entry with a push button start for the SEL trim level and up. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just below the infotainment screen. And so once started up, these gauges are definitely very nice. You get a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster that comes standard with the end line, but we have it today because it's optional on the SEL, but you can't get it on the limited, which is kind of interesting because for 2022, it came standard on the limited. So couple little changes there for whatever reason for 2023 but we do have that 10 and a quarter inch screen otherwise you're going to get the analog gauges that i showed in last year's review so i'll actually leave a link to the 2022 elantra review at the end of this video if you wanted to check that out but digital gauge cluster i love it because it changes with the drive modes for example if you put it in this sport it's going to kind of give you this carbon fiber and red hues if you put it in smart or normal it's going to look the same kind of like a silver look so i absolutely love the fact that you could change the entire look depending upon the drive mode that you put it in but it is all adjustable and there are steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel so you can kind of toggle through like safety features a digital speedometer when you need your next oil change the list goes on so i absolutely love the digital gauges again i'll just say that but so then touching on overall interior quality if you wanted a power sunroof go with the limited or endline trim levels wireless phone charger same trim levels for those two again dual zone climate control coming with the sel trim level and up so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there multi color ambient lighting coming with the limited trim level if you wanted that alloy foot pedals coming with the end line trim level and one of the cool little 
aspects, I guess, to the interior of the Elantra since it first came out is you have this massive kind of grab handle separating the driver and the passenger. It reminds me of the new C8 Corvette, minus all of the buttons that they put on theirs, but that is a pretty cool design aspect. And everything is tilted, including the infotainment screen, slightly towards the driver, kind of like the Nissan GTR. So it's a much more driver-centric car, which is a good thing. It kind of feels like a sportier vehicle because of that. It's kind of got these Audi-esque kind of vents, the air vents just above the uh just below the infotainment screen it kind of continues on all the way across so i think that is pretty cool i do like the gloss black finishes right around the cup holders and surrounding the shifter as well just in front of the shifter we actually have a wireless phone charger which is optional on the sel i didn't mention that so that's pretty cool 12 volt power outlet couple usb charging ports and electromechanical parking brake to the left of the shifter again your cup holders just behind that within the center armrest you have eh, okay amount of storage it's not that much but it's pretty much on par for the segment i'll just put it that way i like the three little uh contrast stitching going across the uh the doors as well it's a nice little design element that they didn't have to do but they did so overall interior quality is actually okay now don't get me wrong there is going to be a lot of plastic found like the grab handle and uh like the grab handle and the power window buttons but overall for this segment it's not all that bad but anyways so let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen it is an eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the se and sel trim levels but then there is a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display coming with the limited and the end line trim levels and optional on the sel that we have today we do have that option so that is pretty darn cool either way you get bluetooth and audio streaming wireless android auto apple carplay if you go with the eight inch screen but the 10 and a quarter inch screen is going to give you wired Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So you just got to hook it up via USB cable. But it's kind of interesting. You would think it would be vice versa, but that's not the way Hyundai does it for whatever reason. But you can also check out your climate control settings up there. There is a voice memo system so you can record your voice and then play it back at a later date if you wanted to. You can also adjust your ambient lighting colors if you were to go with a limited trim level, of course. Factory navigation system is going to come on the 10 and a quarter inch screen. You could check out your weather information up there if you wanted to it pretty much has everything also of course your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems for the se se and n line trims you're going to get six speakers but i do like the speaker covers it's kind of finished in a silver it is plastic but silver finish so i do like that but then an eight speaker bose sound system is then going to come with the limited trim level so i did want to kind of emphasize that but anyways we do have the six speaker sound system so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and Let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> that song is called Bikini Bottom. How stinking cool is that? Somebody is a fan of SpongeBob. But anyways, that sound system was just okay, if I'm being honest. If you like music, definitely go with the Bose sound system for the limited, but... Uh, that's pretty much a pretty average six speaker sound system for the segment. It's pretty much like uh, the bass Corolla would sound like or something like that. So nothing special there, but anyways, it'll get the job done. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Elantra in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS top safety pick, which pretty much says it all right there. Front side side current airbags do come standard in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection a blind spot collision avoidance assist system lane keep assist lane following assist a driver attention warning system then as well then if you were to go with the limited or end line you're going to get rear parking sensors that's pretty cool and then the limited trim level is going to add in addition to that highway drive assist as well which is kind of hyundai's level two autonomous driving system so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, I do like the exterior styling. I think it looks dang good. Digital gauges on this particular segment is a big win as well. Multicolor ambient lighting being available. That is awesome. Braking is crushing it compared to the competition. I love the braking in the Elantra. Definitely gives you that amazing feeling of being in control, like you could come to a stop on a dime if you needed to. So big fan of that. Not only that, you get America's Best Warranty. You get three years of complimentary maintenance. Probably going to run out of room to put all the pluses on the actual screen here. So 
Digital key, I love that as well. So if your key fob dies, there is a way to still start your car when your key fob dies, but still you can use the digital key if you wanted to. So either way, don't call a tow truck, you don't need to. Wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay being available. I believe the competition doesn't offer that. I know the Corolla doesn't. The only constructive criticism I could think of is specifically for the N line. I know there's a lot of questionable reliability when it comes to that because of the uh, dual clutch transmission used in that. And this particular trim level, it's not the quickest thing in the world. It'll get the job done, but again, it's not gonna win any races, but that's okay. That's not what it's built for. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Elantra in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.